Hello my friends, Alfred Taro, the Rebel Turner, and I'm back. I'm thinking I'm gonna make a round vessel of some sort and capture some of this crotch effect. Originally I was thinking that I would make a little hollow vessel from the end grain like this and capturing these two pits on the outside but by the time I get way in here they're not going to be that far out and over here of course I have the two pits on the bottom as you can see. So, but the way I'm thinking, I'm going to shape this like a saucer, make a tenon over here, flip it over, and see if I can capture any of this on the overall shape. This will be all cut away anyway. So this will be the bottom of, or the center point where it splits up into two. It's not too badly balanced. It's starting off at 500 RPM. This will balance off real quick though. I always stop the lathe many times because if I keep on going I'm not gonna know exactly what it's doing other than me looking at the ghost image.
I'm going to see if I can bring it up to this stop edge on both sides and uh, keep some of this natural edge on the top. I don't know. I will see. this is cutting it's kind of uh, making me believe it's not black walnut but I will see still got a ways to go to remount it and uh, make this tenon a little bit. It's uh, a little bit on the weak side. a little bit better. It's a little punky out here anyway. Sorry about that, but the camera messed up. I could still see it on monitor, but 
it was not recorded. And at one time it was completely out of focus. So it was at that point when I fixed the focus, I messed something else up.
time to go in there with a little bit of Yorkshire bread. I love it when I find a piece of wood and uh, I get it home, get it on a lathe and it offers me beautiful grains like this. Now you might be asking yourself as to why did I leave this piece in here and uh, you know that's strictly a personal option or opinion. In my opinion I like it when I leave a little bit of uh, mother nature showing that this was a crotch and there are two pits one here one here. So being separated by that, and then there's another main pit here and here. So there's a total of four pits on this piece. So I thought it would only be appropriate that I left a little bit of that. Now I could take that completely down because I
little room on this corner where I could round the dead off. And uh, I don't think I want to do that because I would lose this little wedge that's over here. And it would somewhat be off balanced with the sap that's on this side. The characteristics on this wood, even though I said oh, it's walnut, and I know that it's not mahogany, but the characteristics on what I see here, on what I know about mahogany, that's what it looks like. Beautiful, beautiful piece of wood. A lot of variations of browns uh, going into some greenish hues in here. Beautiful colors. I can't believe the colors on this. So I will be having a few of these beautiful pieces. This will be the only one like this, for sure. But they'll be beautiful pieces. I am mounting this on the back side on expansion mode on my jaws. Not a lot of pressure to So, just going in there, putting it in, the shoulder's nice and flat against the back, and just opening up the jaws a little bit. You're not going to do serious cutting, so it's going to be very lightly, just enough for it to grip, and turn up, or turn the base away. The reason why I'm using this hollow tool is just to show you that you can do it with anything. That sounds very hollow, so that means I don't have too much thickness at all in there. So I'm going to be very careful. I gotta take that middle down a little bit. Make sure that your middle is not higher than the outside.
And here it is. I mean, coming off the uh, the lathe, the chuck, and absolutely nothing. No scarfing, no marks. And the pressure, of course, was against here, and this part was up against the shoulders. And that's how you do something as long as you got the size if that didn't work like if that was small and I had this rim then I would have put this on the out, outer jaws so I always try to work things that are going to be somewhat sizes that I can make it work I don't measure I just aesthetically I like something that's around the size so if it's around that size I know it will fit then if it's a wide mouth and I have absolutely nothing you can always put your felt pad as a soft uh, spot and put the base of the uh, your bowl, whatever you're doing, on there. Well, like I said earlier during the the turning of this. I lost some of the recording. The, our, the focus was completely out. I don't know what it was picking up. Um, so I, when I noticed it, I went to the camera, I went through the settings, I changed it, I cleaned the lenses, I did a few things. And at that time, I think I might have forgotten, oh, because I was in the menu, forgot to hit the record button, I think. And continued turning. So didn't lose a lot but I know we lost some footage now this is not done the base is done but this is going to be taking a lid to go here with a finial so that will come up next time thanks for watching and we'll see you again very soon